On that day in 1999, Craig Scott's sister Rachel was the first person killed. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Craig is seeing Amanda stare for the first time since evacuating the school 20 years ago. You doing okay? Yeah. Okay. Heather Martin formed the Rebels Project, a group that goes to the scene of mass shootings to assist. Michelle Wheeler now teaches preschool in the district and has never spoken publicly about that day. Frank DeAngelis was the principal. He continued to serve in the job for another 15 years, a promise to see every student who was in the system at the time of the shooting through graduation. Show of hands, how many of you think about it every day? All of you. Every morning when I wake up, uh, as soon as I get out of bed, I recite the names of my beloved 13. How many of you, show of hands, still ask why? None of you. Why is that? We've all been there. We've all been at that point where we're just angry at the world. I also think it's a question that can never be answered. We don't know why they did what they did. So you stopped trying to wonder? Well, I mean, I've forgiven them. I think that they lost their lives way before the 20th. I think they were very broken souls. There's nothing I would get out of knowing why. Michelle, you haven't spoken about this publicly. No. Since. Right. You have a 13 year old. Mm -hmm. How does that impact the way you raise her? And um, <clears throat> I started telling her about the shooting when she was five and going into kindergarten. Um, and I started very developmentally appropriate, just saying mommy sad that her friends are in heaven. And then as she got older, I started to tell her a little bit more. The hardest day of my life was sending her to kindergarten. Um, I ended up in Mr. Frank DeAngelis' office um, in tears. I had no idea what I was doing, why I was letting her go. And every day still is a struggle. You know, every day um, I make sure I say I love you, and then I am so excited when she gets back into my car at the end of the day. Do you think about where she can get out places, exits? Um, we'll be in the doctor's office or King Supers or somewhere, and I'll say, show me five places where you'll hide because it could happen anywhere, and I want her to be prepared. Um, and I think it makes me feel prepared. While Michelle raises her daughter and teaches in the district, Heather frequently travels outside. The Rebels Project, we really focus in long term because, you know, after an event, all the help in the world is focused on that one area. And it's really after the cameras go away that people start to feel that isolation and start to feel that loneliness. So our outreach doesn't start until you know, sometimes months after the event. Do you still feel the isolation and loneliness? I don't feel the isolation anymore. I know I'm not alone. Craig Scott formed a group called uh, Value we'll Up, which that. teaches kids about respect. He's had kids acknowledge terrible like thoughts. Why. One even handed him uh, a hit list. He handed you a hit list. Yeah, uh, over the years, my family and I, we've seen uh, over a dozen documented school shootings prevented from sharing really the story of my sister. What are you trying to tell kids these days? I meet so many kids that um, are uh, feeling disconnected or don't feel they're, they're valuable. When I learned about the shooters at Columbine, I saw in their journals a real self-hatred, that they didn't value themselves. And if you were to ask me the biggest reason that Columbine happened, it wasn't uh, bullying at our school, it wasn't uh, the medication they were on, it wasn't the lack of gun control, it wasn't uh, that our, our, our school was a bad place or bad parenting. The biggest reason I tell kids that Columbine happened was that the shooters focus on everything that was negative in this world. If there's one thing you want people to know 20 years later, what is it? What Columbine represents, when I speak to the communities from Parkland and Santa Fe and Sandy Hook, I said Columbine represents hope. And even though the road's gonna be tough, it's gonna be a tough journey and you're gonna be kicked down, you gotta get back up and we're all there, and we're all part of this club, and we could all help each other. But I truly believe that the Columbine community is stronger today than what it was almost 20 years ago, and we provide hope for others.